Hi, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to migrate your cPanel WordPress website over to Plesk the manual way. And when I say manual, that means um, we're going to copy all the files and the database over manually without using any tools uh, to import your website. So there is an option at RuPal and on Plesk if your hosting provider provides it to import your website using this website importing tool. And you can simply just enter the username and password uh, if you have FTP access to the cPanel account and it should auto detect the uh, WordPress website and migrate your database over, migrate the files over and you should be good to go. But this doesn't always work and that's because sometimes people's WordPress we websites are very complex or they're too big and this tool will time out eventually and not work. So if this tool fails, you have to do use a different method um, to migrate your website and the only way to do that is to manually migrate everything over. So the first thing we're going to do is you have to go back to the cPanel account and you need to go to file manager and we need to go to the root folder of where the WordPress site lives. So in cPanel, that's going to be public HTML and you're going to see these files that say WP admin, WP content and WP includes. So this means this is the root folder of the WordPress site and um, we have to copy all these files over and put them on our Plesk hosting for that domain, the same domain that we'll be migrating. Uh, so there's a couple things here we're going to have to watch out for, and I'm going to explain that later in the video. One is this user.ini file and the HT access file. So if we look at this file, we'll actually be able to see some things that will probably break the website. And I'm glad this is uh, here because sometimes some of these will break the website after migration. So you have to you know, remove the HT access file and put it back to normal, the normal default WordPress.ht access and remove everything in here, then re-enable the plugins and add all the uh, different extra stuff that um, re-enable everything basically with your plugins and then I'll re-add it to your .ht access file. But we'll come back to that to see if it does break the website. Um, this will break the website on Plesk because Plesk's.ini file is not generated in the file manager. So we'll we'll have to fix this as well, but I'm going to leave it now just to see if we can migrate, th migrate everything over without fixing anything and we'll fix it, fix it once we move it to the Plesk server. So the first thing we need to do is click uh, the top um, folder we want to copy everything in the public HTML. So I'm going to hold shift and click all the files right here. And I made sure those are all the files and I'm going to click compress and I'm going to slick select the zip archive. And I am going to go down here and I'm going to call this a backup dot zip and I'm going to click compress files. So what this does is it compresses all the files into a zip folder that we're going to upload through FTP for the website at Plesk, on Plesk. So this will just, you know, this this can take a, take a couple minutes or sometimes, honestly, it could take, you know, I've seen it take 30 to 45 minutes and then it never finishes because your website's too big. And, you know, big WordPress websites that have that issue, you know, they're 9, 10, 30, 50, 60 gigs. It's going to take a it's going to take a while for that compressed thing to finish. So leave it up on the screen, come back to it, you know, um, a little bit later, maybe an hour or two later or however long it takes. You should get a compression results box. But if you don't, that's fine. After a period of time. Um, it'll keep saying it's loading and it's probably already done. It's just something maybe it happened on cPanel that it timed out and you weren't able to 
see the compression results and it just says it, it's continuously compressing but it's it's not so i've seen that error before um where it just continuously continuously says it's compressing forever but it's not so now we want to find that backup.zip and we're going to download it so right click and click download so now that we're downloading it i'm going to go ahead and open um my ftp clients which i'm going to use filezilla and i'm going to connect to the plesk uh ftp for the website on plesk so let's do that all right, so I've opened up my FileZilla and I entered a, the IP address, the username and the password and I clicked connect and I'm now connected. It got the directory and I'm going to go to that website. So I'm going to click HTTP docs and this is the root directory for the website. So um, I'm going to delete this index.htmi file html file because this is what it currently looks like we open up in a new tab we'll see this is what it is and now we're going to import the the files um to, so you don't need this in, index.html that's automatically generated by plesk and then you can see it's 403 forbidden meaning there's no index file in that directory so now we're going to take that backup.zip file and we're going to upload it into that folder. So now I'm going to drag the backup.zip that we just backed up and let it upload to the server. And my upload speed is not as fast, um, so it might take some time. This site compressed is about 170 mega, megabytes, so it shouldn't take that long. Um, but you know, if your website is five, 10, 15 gigs, it's gonna it's gonna take some time. Just let it upload um, and then come back to it. But while it's uploading, we can actually do something because we're gonna have to grab the database on the cPanel site. So now we're gonna go back to the cPanel and we're going to get the database that's linked to it. So this is what I like to do. I like to go into the w-config and edit and check out the pat or the not the password, the database name and the database user. So they're the same. That's good. Um, it doesn't matter if they're different. We just have to edit this later. But I want to grab this database. This is the database we need to copy over to our Plesk um website so i'm just going to copy this close it and then i'm going to head over to cpanel and we're going to download this database so to do that you're going to go to mysql databases uh no sorry you're going to go to backup and we're going to go to database backups. Sorry, I guess, I guess there's something different. Um, this is jet backup. So you're going to actually just go to the regular backup. Do not go to jet backup. Um, we're going to go to the regular backup, uh, which is the cPanel backup and we're going to click backup and there's the database and so let's make sure it's the right one it's the right one so now we're going to click the download mysql database backup so i'm going to click this it's going to download the database backup into a dot g dot sql dot gz file and we're actually going to upload that to the ftp as well so i'm going to upload this to the FTP and this one should be a little bit quicker because it you know SQL compresses really well in these uh, .gz files so there we go that was quick and now we're gonna head back over 
to our Plesk and we're gonna go to File Manager. And we're gonna click this and we're gonna go over here and we're going to extract the files. So make sure you extract the files for the .zip, which contains all the files and the folders of the WordPress website. And go ahead and select replace existing files, but there's no files in there, so it doesn't matter. And click OK. And there we go, that's quick. Typically this is quick, even if it's five, six gigs, it might take, you know, a couple seconds. It's, or at most 20, 30 seconds. So everything is, um, everything is there. So now we're gonna go back to databases and we're gonna create a new database. So, you know, I'm gonna give this database any type of name, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, it could be the same that you used. I'm gonna use a different database name um, and I'm gonna give it the same database username and I'm gonna generate a password, which I do not want you guys seeing. You already saw it. All right, well, I'll block that out later. And now we're going to not click this, but, um, and we're just gonna leave this or allow remote connections from any host. I don't think we're gonna, I don't think I want this open. So allow local connections only. This will allow um, your database to be accessed from a different server. Um, but if you want to make it a little bit more secure, you can just click that and click OK. And now we're going to import the dump of the database. So I'm going to click import dump and we're going to go to HTTP docs. And we're actually going to look for the database that we just uploaded through FTP. And we're going to select this and click OK and recreate the database, sure. So I'm gonna click okay, and it's going to import the database. Um, and it should be really quick. I mean, unless your database is really large, it's, you know, five, six gigs, this should go pretty quickly. But if it's five or six gigs, it might take five, 10 minutes, you might get an error. So you might want to contact RuPaul support and say, hey, you know, this fight's too big, can you help us? Uh, import the database and we will have to do it on another manual way through SSH. Um, and so that would be the last resort, but typically this import dump works almost every single time. So now we'll refresh. The database size is correct. Now we're gonna go back to our file manager and we're gonna go to the wconfig file. And we're gonna put our new database name and our new database user. And we're gonna put our password in. And we're gonna click save. And now we're gonna preview our website because it should work. But remember, there's some other things that could be breaking it. Uh, hopefully there is so I could show you how to fix it. So we're gonna click preview website and it looks like it did work. So yeah, the, the it, that's a good thing, you know, that it, it did work and um, there weren't anything breaking, but if you're getting some 500 errors or some other errors, uh, make sure to check out the logs, uh, you know, the, the logs files of the Plesk. This will show you anything that's going wrong that you can fix yourself before reaching out, you know, to RuPaul support. Check your file manager, go to your, check this. There's no need for this .ini file. Like you can remove this and it should still work. Uh, go to your HT access. And sometimes there will be PHP modifications inside this file. You do not want that. You do not want any type of PHP changes, and so you have to remove that, uh, or you're getting you're going to get some 500 
error on your website after migration because your .ht access is not correct. The way to easily fix this is you just go to WordPress default .ht access file, you know, and um, you go to to WordPress's ht access. You copy this right here, the basic uh, WP .ht access. You go back to your file manager and you replace everything in there. You click save and boom, your 500 errors are gone. This will disable some of the, you know, automatic gzip or word fence protection you have or some other rewrite rules that you have on your website. That's fine. You can re-enable them after your website comes back because then you can go back into your WP admin, re-enable those plugins, um, you know, resave them or whatever, and your website will work again perfectly fine. So now I'm going to just click this back up. I don't need it anymore. My migration worked. My WordPress website is working now, and I've fully migrated my WordPress website over the manual way without using the website import tool. So that's how you do it. That's how you migrate everything over from cPanel to Plesk, the manual way. This way will work almost every single time uh, unless you have some issues with those 500 errors. You know, you gotta, you gotta solve those. It's most likely gonna be the .ht access or a .ini file that you have in there that you don't need. So um, if you have any troubles, migrate anything over, contact RootPal support. If you're stuck at some point, uh, we'll help you out. But that's basically it. That's how you migrate your website over the manual way from cPanel to Plask. Thank you.